right, we'll call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation following. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please bless our elected officials. Grant them the wisdom to know and the courage to do what is right for all citizens. Amen. 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 Roll call, please. Allen? Here. Green? Here. LaFour? Here. Ms. Stravich? Here. Rick? Here. Warren? Here. Good to see everybody here tonight. Approval of minutes for the regular city council meeting of December 19th would be in order. Motion. Support. Post been made and supported. Any discussion on those minutes? Being not, all in favor of the motion, celebrate. Celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Say aye. 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 Against. Motion passes. Uh, starting the new year out right, eh? <laughs> okay, we move on to audience comments, which we have none this evening. We will move on to adoption of agenda. Mr. City Manager, any changes? No changes. City Council, any changes? No. Oops. Motion to accept the agenda as presented would be in order. Motion. Support. Motion made and supported. Any discussion on the motion? Being not, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Again, say nay. Motion passes. We need a motion for the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve a consent agenda as presented. Support. Motion has been made and supported. There's no discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against. Motion does pass. We have four items for consideration this evening. The first one being the consideration of the five-year <coughs> water and sewer master plan. Mr. City Manager. City Council is scheduled to consider approving updates to the five-year water and sewer master plans. The MDEQ requires all communities responsible for maintaining a public water supply and sewer collection system to have a master plan document identifying the characteristics of their water and sanitary sewer systems, including future planning and capital improvement needs. Uh, these plans, the updates were provided to council uh, prior to the holidays. And then, uh, as, as we mentioned in the background brief, uh, due to kind of the slow economy and uh, everything, these, this current five-year update kind of focuses on updating a lot of the costs associated with some of the long-term plans that we have in those. Um, the update in probably 2011 uh, will probably be a little more extensive. Um, we've had some major uh, water main improvements and stuff, some of which weren't uh, completed by the time these were being updated, like Pound Road. Um, so uh, we're looking at doing those the next time. So these plans are pretty much kind of an up, uh, you, know, you know, tweaking of the plans that were adopted by council five years ago. Very good. Um, and Jim Getzinger is here tonight if you have any questions. Okay. Is there a motion before discussion? I make a motion to authorize approval of the 2016 updates to the city's water and sanitary sewer master plan documents. Support. What's been made and supported? Any discussion? Jim, was there anything that you wanted to add to what the city manager said? Uh, I mean, not really. John said it's mostly cost uh, for projects. There was some rearranging of the projects for the water based on priorities, things that have changed in the last five years. But uh, uh, that's basically it. And uh, flow, we did get some comparison flows because development like Metal Lodge and it, our flows are still pretty accurate based on when they were done in 2004. But in five years we'll probably redo our hydrant flow testing just to confirm how our systems are producing it looks like we're in pretty good shape otherwise I mean yep yep and uh, well, uh, one thing I almost forgot is asset management is a big thing the DEQ is requiring and we did receive a saw grant for example for our sanitary system and so we'll, we'll be implementing that in a couple of years water there is no grant for it but I was informed by the DEQ that our next update will have to include more uh, asset management. Now it's a lot s uh, simpler for the water, so I don't expect any issues with that, but that'll be part of it too. Okay. And, and that would be five years away then too? For yeah. Uh, I know the DEQ said 2018. We may have to kind of uh, append to the master plan potentially for the asset management part of it, but I expect any real cost would be in five years for, okay. for the update. Okay. Very good. Any other comments, questions? Being not, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Against? Motion does pass. Item number two is consideration of Bailey Park ball field improvements. Mr. City Manager. Council is scheduled to consider directing administration to bid out the improvements to the Bailey Park ball field. Uh, during the discussions for the fiscal year 2016-17 budget, uh, City Council directed administration to look at the possibility of making upgrades to that ball field uh, as we've done improvements to the tennis courts and as RAGS has have done improvements to their area of Bailey Park. It's left one kind of area that has not had any improvements done in a significant amount of time, that being uh, the ball field there at Bailey Park. Um, since it's not exclusively a Little League field, they haven't been maintaining it. We have done some nominal maintenance to it over the years from the city side, uh, and so council didn't feel it reflected well on our parks as people drove past it, and it's with it being so visible from uh, BB Street. Uh, so with that, um, administration and, and the mayor had met with uh, Little League to kind of go over some of the improvements that probably need to be made to that field, uh, also looked at the potential of trying to change the area or the orientation of the field to see if we could get larger outfields but it didn't appear that with kind of the tennis courts where they are and everything else that we could do that uh, so basically the project that uh, Jim put together based on input from that meeting uh, as well as kind of input from the council over the years of what they would like to see and what they'd like to maintain there which is kind of a more open feel uh, than some of the other fields over at Little League uh, Jim put together cost estimates for replacing the fence with fence that's uh, compatible with the tennis courts or similar to that, the black vinyl coated fencing, uh, dugouts that are kind of the split face block that we've used on some of the city buildings, uh, but a combination of block and fence to keep them a little more open uh, in nature, uh, as well as uh, some drainage improvements. So we put that together uh, in the plan sheets that you see here tonight. Um, and Jim would like to get moving on that to, uh, put that out to bid and so we just wanted to we've taken it to TIFA as far as the funding side but also are taking it tonight to both the rec board and the city council just to kind of get your blessing as well because it wasn't part of the budget when we originally adopted it very good thank you is there a motion I'll make a motion to direct administration to proceed with the bid process for Bailey Park ball field improvements support what's been made and supported any discussion Long overdue, as the city manager said. I believe I played on those as a kid. Um, so they're pretty old. Um, they don't look very well. They don't represent our park system very well. And um, as council has already pointed out uh, to administration, we wanted to see what it would cost. And, and hats off to the administration uh, and, and uh, uh, Jim for getting it together so fast um, for us so that uh, it'd be something we can uh, be proud of probably this spring um, it's uh, badly needed uh, in our park system as are some other things but uh, this right now really speaks not very well of our park if you look at the facility so I think we take on some added responsibility along uh, with uh, those who might use it um, as far as maintenance goes um, once uh, Little League season is over with Little League normally would would stop doing any type of maintenance on the diamond and um, that's where I think the city is going to have responsibility to keep that diamond maintained whether it's spraying roundup on it to keep the weeds down it's not going to take much and we already mow the grass and everything else there so uh, I don't see where uh, but I think a, a higher level of maintenance is going to be needed than what we've seen in the past over there um, Jim I have a question uh, for you um, I not sure if I read it here or in an update or when we talked about it before um, but yeah here, here it is it's in this update here um, administra administration will call uh, date in bid documents a final completion by June 2nd um, the way last winter went and the way this winter is going right now I I build a few diamonds uh, over them uh, many years over softball diamonds same basic thing uh, sunk poles and everything else there's no frost in the ground sp to speak of right now is there any reason that we can't say look at if you know if the weather is going to hold out 
that we would like this done sooner than June 2nd? Um, yeah, I, I did update the documents with my, I guess, stab at that. I did change it to say completion date June 2nd. And right now the the wording is uh, with an asterisk. It says uh, opening day for Richmond Little League baseball is Saturday, April 29th. The contractor is encouraged to complete the project by April 29th. That's that's how I left it. Uh, if we want to be more strong, okay, which potentially could be. But that's how I. The concern was uh, if we say April 29th and the contractor for whatever reason, weather or other work, maybe the prices would go up. Uh, that was the concern. So. It is stated what we'd like. Uh, we can change that. Okay. Okay. I don't have a problem with April 29th. Um, I just, the whole month of May, it could be awfully nice. And uh, kids could be playing ball on there. Um, families could be playing ball. I see a lot of that, that diamond's used a lot just for mm -hmm. individuals going there and, and practicing with their, their children quite often. Um, so May usually is a, a pretty decent uh, month for, for softball or baseball, softball, whatever it may be over there. Um, so whatever it takes. Um, I, I of the possibility of like a financial incentive to get it done then too. Um, you, you know, like, like Jim said, we we're just worried about, you know, several of the contractors looking at April 29th and not knowing, like you said right now, you could get, end up with some, some weather that is very conducive to getting them done before opening day, but not knowing that now they may be reluctant to keep their bids at a good yeah good price if you get the low price but then offer them you know a couple thousand for <laughs> that date it might still be beneficial in the long run okay other conversation um i agree with you mr mayor that it's long overdue uh for that particular field it is right across from the park and it is utilized by many children within that neighborhood and children that walk to the park and then walk over to play baseball and um, it does need work it's in substandard condition um, i also do feel that with the recent improvements to the tennis courts that uh, city council may want to consider possibly looking into a some sort of permanent outhouse in that area something so that there's not the the need to cross bb street and go all the way over to the park restrooms, which are not always open, you know, at certain times of the year as well, when the tennis courts and the um, baseball field may be being utilized. So perhaps we can discuss that at our workshop on the 30th. And I agree. I agree with you. It's uh, hit or miss sometimes with the uh, outhouse being over there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are other uh, possibilities there. Uh, one of them, John, I know uh, that you meet with the city managers every so often. Is Lexington one of them that you? Uh, he's been coming to the meetings recently, so yeah, he was they, at the last one. They have uh, a portable um, porta john, okay. and it is on wheels. I don't know if they own it or if they lease it for the season. They also have, just like we do pretty much the, uh, the bathroom uh, situation that's in uh, BB Park. But they also have this, I think, for some of the overflow nights when they have things going on over there. Mm -hmm. um, and I know uh, through the Good Old Days Festival, um, they are always offering us different types of uh, outhouses and, and handicapped uh, accessible and also, what are they, John, uh, like building? They call them buildings? Yeah, the buildings. It's a uh, portable portable bathroom, basically, is what it is. Yeah. It has its own holding tank, self-sufficient. Yeah. So, anyhow, you know, it would be nice if there's any way possible by the uh, workshop, mm -hmm. if we could get a few ideas on what the possibilities are. Yeah. Also, if there's any grant money out there, maybe, <coughs> um, that would, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what I want to say, handicapped accessible uh, restrooms uh, over there, because um, that is quite a distance to get to sure. one over in BB Park. And hopefully, we're going to see more use now that the, as you have said, uh, we're upgrading. You know, hopefully, we see a lot more <coughs> use of that park, which is going to uh, necessitate uh, a better restroom facility. So, if we could, is it? Yeah. 
we can look at that mm -hmm. uh, maybe on the 30th. Yeah, we can take a look at like the options of anywhere from full-blown bathrooms, even just a unisex one over there. Um, we can kind of take a look at where water and sewer are in that area. Um, I know over the years we've often rented a portage on for the tennis court area just because in the spring and summer it gets a lot of use. Um, but then uh, we can also look at other options too. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. See an agenda item on Thank you. discussion I during the. That. Thank you. Very good. Good idea. Anything else? Yes, yes. Mr. Oh. Go, go ahead. <laughs> yes, and I would also like to support um, Councillor Allen's idea of exploring bathroom options. So I look forward to that being on our agenda at our um, workshop. Also, one thing that sets this park um, aside from the Little League fields is I feel more that the though the, the entire area belongs to the city and it is our responsibility, this one is more of a universal um, field that gets used as Councilor Allen said by families by pickup baseball by kickball by just or just an open field besides the good old days field that people um, it, it just seems more their draw families are drawn to that so I I am in complete support of this um, this venture that we're doing and I, I'm it is time that we do it and take care of it and then continue on the maintenance of it so I'm in full support of that as well Very good. Any other comments? Yes. Um, I concur with everything and agree with uh, Councillor Allen's suggestion to have something more permanent over there for uh, restrooms. Um, as being a member of the good old days and specifically a chairperson for the vendors that, that are there, um, I think this will be a big, big improvement because there's, a little, as we know, we have lots of people coming through that area where the vendors are. Mm -hmm. And it, the improvement will make that park look better for people that are visiting during good old days. So with that, this last year, um, before it was easy for me to kind of coordinate and keep track on stopping people from actually parking within on the baseball diamonds. Mm -hmm. And this year it was a little bit more difficult because we had two additional groups that were participating in good old days. The Michigan Teaks Antiques group brought in a lot of people and they were parking basically behind where their tents were we try to get them to move but they were kind of just rolling their eyes at us and that sort of thing and then also with the antique snowmobiles they also like to park there too like so we'll have to try to either communicate or come up with a good old days policy for that field you know we know we do know that the little league does manage parking on the other f baseball diamonds yeah but they, they usually try to stay off of the diamond itself and park on the grass and if we're going to go through these improvements i wouldn't want to have people parking on the diamond, especially like last year, last year we did have rain, so there were possibility for some ruts, and sometimes they're carrying trailers on the back of these things. And it, I, so anyway, we'll have to work with yeah. the good old days and those groups, and yeah. maybe set some sort of policy and set some signs up or something to make sure that we're not uh, going in after this every year and trying to trying to fix yeah. what we hope is going to be a great yeah, thing. I agree with you, Mike, and and I, I I'm sure that's going to be addressed uh, during the good old days meetings. Um, and uh, being that was a, uh, an additional new uh, event this year, there was a lack of communication which caused that. And once it was done, it was pretty hard to undo it. Yep. Uh, but um, yeah, it's not. Gonna, I don't. It's not going to be allowed for for next year. But even more so, if you know the facility is upgraded, uh, we're going to want to protect it mm -hmm. also. Uh, Absolutely. So uh, yeah. With with that, then there is parking over on the stone west street. side on so stone street mm -hmm. would we want additional fencing over there in front of the parking i just i'm just brainstorming well, the with sidewalk that. Uh, there is a sidewalk there and that separates the parking from okay. the, uh from the field itself um, um okay. shrubs Pardon i don't me? know shrubs to prevent people from driving on or well you're not you're the only time that uh I think we have an issue with that is during Let's good go to old days. Okay. And we fence it normally. It's all completely fenced in. Um, I'm not sure what happened this year because I'm not involved. I'm not right. responsible for that part of the festival any longer. Um, but I think it was kind of a hiccup okay. in a few different ways and lack of communication with certain people. Um, and I, I can assure you it will not happen again. Okay. Um, that's just a, not a great area to be parking in anyhow. Uh, although we have put our fire trucks in there and uh, whatnot, but um 
we had better control of what mm -hmm. drove in there. And uh, this year we, we had a whole different event going on in there. And um, we'll, we'll fix that. Okay. I, I can assure you that it'll be fixed by good old days. But, uh, Great. Yeah, no, otherwise, uh, you know, fences, you know, the more fences we put up, the more. Right. I like the open yeah. concept, open yeah. space as it is, since I utilize it all the time. So Plus this diamond, you know, and I don't know, I guess we haven't really mentioned it, but this diamond really is, uh, John had mentioned, you know, the size of it. It really uh, is 10 and under. Mm -hmm. It's about as old as you want to get there. Maybe, maybe 11, 12-year-old um, uh, softball could go in there, but. Uh, my understanding is Little League doesn't go past 10. Is that? It's the minors, yes. It's, your, it's your 10 and a few 11 year olds. I know there's a few that yeah. crush the ball over to the yeah. uh, tennis courts, but uh, normally it's going to be a much smaller. Uh, it's mainly your T ball. Yeah, because yeah. um, tens use A. &B. Coach pitch, kids that are on that field. Yeah. yeah. Except for the double tournament, which is 10 11 10. at that time, yeah. And Tiffa actually uh, also discussed that uh, extending the fences out, and it was the, Tiffa's opinion also was to leave them at the distance there. Now with the dugout being moved in, and we'll be fencing there for people to sit behind. And if we need that further in the future down the line, we can do that. So oh, good. If we warn it once we get it all done, then we see what we need more. Great. And then Jim, uh, I think you said you brought the fencing to where it's in a little bit more like three feet I think yeah a couple feet so it's not it's more of a true you know field you know look or design if you want to call it yeah that. and that's you know I got I had numerous grandchildren playing on that field during the summer and it was it's hard to see mm -hmm. and I think that's especially at that age you know they want you to see them mm -hmm. and we want to see them so um, you know uh, I think that was a great idea bringing that fence in on the other side of the dugouts so that uh, the spectators can sit in. And have some protection in that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. But I heard that uh, there was a possibility, uh, Tiffa was saying, if possible, to extend the fences longer if needed. Yeah, and, uh, you know, put gates in if we felt it was necessary for the good old days issue and that type of thing. But we felt get this part going yeah. and then see what council thinks and rec board and everybody thinks after the fact. Instead of putting the cart in front of the horse, we yeah. let everybody kind of reevaluate after that point. Yeah. Very good. Appreciate Tiffa's support on this. And Parks and Rec is meeting right now, and they're uh, hopefully approving also. <laughs> um, they're yes, and they're kind of waiting for Jim. As soon as we finish, our oh. he's heading that way to talk tennis court lighting and fencing and, and ball field improvements. So <laughs> when he leaves, it's not that he's being rude. He has <laughs> a meeting next door. And, and the drainage that uh, uh, yeah. Jim's proposing and uh, is going to make a tremendous uh, difference behind the back stop yeah. where it was always wet. Uh, there's going to be extra drains uh, taking care of that too. Yeah, so. Great, great. On, on first and third baselines too, right? You're going out a little ways with yep. the catch basin. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Very good. Glad to see everybody working together to make this happen uh, so quickly. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Mm -hmm. um, one more. Maybe we can talk about the quarterly workshop. But with that electrical, there's that electrical panel behind yeah. there. I don't know if it'd be possible because I know we're always struggling for power within Bailey Park. I don't know if there would be a separate project or grant to look at, of maybe running some electrical, maybe to the end of the each dugout or something to uh -huh. have power there. Just for, that's a possibility. You know, while we're going through and digging up, yeah, run something there. And just, yeah, because just I don't think there's anything underground there, is there? Uh, I mean, right now, obviously, it goes to the cabinet and then yeah. out, and then there's a line that runs to the pitcher's mound, you know, for the machine. Yeah. But but that's it. I would assume in the future it would probably be, uh, it may be directional drilling depending on how far it was going or, I, or it could be open cutting. This project, there's really not a significant amount of digging, so I don't think it would save us much to do it right now, mm -hmm. but the cabinet needs work. I mean, that's been discussed, so I think if we were to do a project in the future, fix the cabinet and then and do that. A improve electrical as needed then would, would be my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Nothing else? Mm -mm. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Against say nay. Motion passes. Item number three is consideration of naming some COG delegate. Mr. City Manager. The council is scheduled to consider appointing a delegate to represent the City of Richmond at the Southeastern Michigan Council of Governments, also known as SEMCOG. Uh, Councilor Yarick was our, our 
Representative Semcog with his resignation. That leaves the delegate slot open. Uh, currently, I serve as the alternate, uh, but under the rules of Semcog, the delegate has to be an elected official. Um, there's three uh, general assembly meetings through the year. Um, they're usually in the afternoons. Uh, oftentimes, both myself and uh, Jeff would go off and out drive. So, um, you, you know, I'm still planning on attending all or most of those meetings, but uh, again, they require an elected official to be, to be the delegate. Very good. Okay. Is there a motion? I'd like to uh, make a motion to appoint Mike Misterovich to City of Richmond's delegate to SEMCOG. Support. What's been made and supported? Discussion. Michael, you're uh, up for that? Uh, yes. I didn't even ask you. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, you know, I've, I've, I was hoping you would like yeah. it. <laughs> discussed it before, and um, I think it's a good fit. A lot of, I've been attending a lot of the MML events, and usually the same people from the communities in the SEMCOG region also are in, uh, take a part of the SEMCOG activity. So I'll be going in there and not going in completely, not knowing who these who the people are. Yeah. Plus another benefit, and I do try to, I have been, they have the SEMCOG College, and I've taken a few of their courses, which are good. But a lot of their, um, their headquarters is down in downtown Detroit. And um, so it's usually easy for me if I'm working, because I work in Dearborn, to just, and they're usually late in the afternoon and, and evenings. So it's uh, relatively easy for me to adjust my schedule and stop there on the way home. So, but if anybody else on council has a real good interest in wanting to do that, I'm open for that as well. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Me not. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Again, say nay. Motion passes. Thank you, Michael. Item number four is consideration of council vacancy. Mr. City Manager. Council is scheduled to discuss the process for filling the vacancy created by the resignation of City Council Member Jeff Yarrick uh, to serve as our state representative for the 33rd District. Uh, as Council has discussed, and I've put out some emails to the Council, uh, the uh, City Council application form has been placed on the website. It was also sent out as a news flash. I think some of our Facebook pages, I know the rec board or the Recreation Facebook page shared it. Uh, so it's out there. Uh, we're requesting people fill out that application and return it to the city by uh, noon on Friday. Uh, that would give you um, a full week, a couple weekends to look at those applications prior to your uh, January 16th meeting. Uh, so this item really is kind of on your agenda for discussion. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, as John has stated, and as we've uh, known for some time now, Councilor Yarick was moving on to the State House. And um, as we have talked about this in the past, um, we have until January 18th to fill the uh, void, or we will have the um, Special election. special election in May, I believe. Is, is that what the charter says? May. The next available, which under the current law would be May. I've been involved in four replacements in the years that I've been on city council. And um, they did go to a special election once. Um, and uh, there were reasons for that at the time. Uh, the other three times have been appointments. Um, we went through a process of uh, um, having uh, interviews um, that did that did not go over real well. I didn't personally didn't feel it went over very well. Lost a friend over that um, because that person wasn't chosen. Um, we do have uh, a former councilman who has indicated and has presented an application. Uh, so far, so we do have somebody who's definitely uh, would like the job, and there may be others out there. I believe we have until January 6th to accept those applications. As of right now, there are no other applications. Um, I would like to make a motion that the City Council make an appointment to fill the Council vacancy at the January 16th regular City Council meeting. Support. Most been made in support. Discussion on that motion. 
the point of that is is um, we're going to appoint somebody. I don't think we should go to the um, cost of having a special election. It's that simple. Um, let's let's make a decision. It, it may be very simple because we may only have one application. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to appoint that person either. We could go to a special election still. This motion is kind of taken that away from us. This motion says we will fill that vacancy. So that's why I'm making it. And also this vacancy is only till fall. Till yeah, November. till November, yes. So we're, you know, somebody's going to have to rerun anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any discussion on that? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I would agree also. If this was a term that wasn't ending until three years from now, it might be a different story as far as having a special election or go through some more detailed interviewing as well. But to put the expense at a special election at this time, which our clerk has estimated usually costs about $5,000 for a six-month term is not uh, fiscally responsible, I think, for us to do. Yeah. So I'm in favor of the motion. Okay. Anybody else? Being not? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? The motion does pass. Okay. We move on to city manager's comments. Sir? Uh, just want to remind that uh, the ice rink is up and running. Uh, we did get some good ice there uh, prior to the warm-up. Um, <laughs> actually had some reports that people were using it today. Uh, we anticipate with the weather turning cold tomorrow, we'll probably resurface it on Thursday once it gets good and cold. Um, it, but it uh, has been uh, getting a lot of use out there already this year, so uh, that's good. Also, uh, continuing with the streetscape efforts, the uh, J rank will be in town this Thursday uh, to probably take down the poles uh, for the across the road banners uh, near the old post office and ball equipment there, and probably set the bases and the anchor bolts um, uh, for the new poles that will be installed then in the spring. Uh, so moving on that and then we did have a TIFA meeting last week uh, where they approved uh, the flower pots uh, bids and so we anticipate that we'll uh, have those ready uh, they're getting planted uh, this month uh, so that come uh, Memorial Day weekend provided some good weather uh, we'll be able to put those out on the street very good very good okay moving on council comments Michael um, just just one thing um, regards to the the weather we've had that's been going up and down and having some nice days and uh, some people have been asking because they've been seeing it over at the Henry Ford medical new complex that's being built we're wondering are there a set schedule on when they can work like during these winter months if you may not know the answer you know I think it's nice if they decide to work there or if they're basically stopping until no I, think, or no, I think no. I think their goal is to be open in March. So okay. Okay. I believe they'll be working all through the winter. Yep. Yeah, I would. In in seeing the building, they got it closed in. Yeah, I believe. Right. I think that was so that they could heat right. the interior to do the drywall work and other work during, you know, the cold months here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. hopefully. That's Dennis? it. Dennis, um, just one thing, uh, John Namista uh, Tifa did uh, approve uh, basketball hoops for the skate park over there by the pool. Oh, nice. uh, so they're gonna have a full court basketball court inside the fenced in area. And they're actually gonna stripe that also. Mm -hmm. So, and then stripe the half courts also. Uh, so the kids we've noticed, uh, or the city has noticed that kids have been marking their own lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? No kidding. No. So, uh, <laughs> so I think that was a signal that they needed. So yeah. I thought that was a... Yeah. A uh, good investment uh, to keep the kids busy. Now uh, those lines are only for the new court, the full court, full court, and uh, the half courts, uh, for the hoop spot. The outside, yep, outside, outside the fence. Oh, good. Also. Oh, so okay. Point in the out of bounds so they can actually yeah. have half games if you want. Well, good, so good idea. Yeah, that was a great idea that. Yeah, they came up. Absolutely. With. Yep. Very good. Very good. You're going to want a scoreboard out there before you know it. <laughs> 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 we'll go some sidewalk chalk. We'll start a new wish list. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Anything else, Dennis? No, that's it. Maybe? Yes. Um, I have a question for John. How is our response to the survey monkey going? Uh, going well. From what I hear from the uh, uh, 
county uh, have talked to Troy and, and we've been doing better than a lot of other bigger communities that put out uh, similar and uh, probably this week we'll also be we have a lot of our boards and commissions that we have the emails for like EDC uh, TIFA Parks and Rec library and we'll be sending it directly to those board and commission oh, members great. as well because I know a lot of them have you know are more apt to uh, do those type of community involvement things uh, but I know the first couple of weeks it got out there there was an article I think in the voice um, there on the Macomb there was something where I saw it on online in one of the papers um, and they were saying we were getting a larger response than some communities larger than us really well that's great thank you Emily nothing tonight thank you John nothing tonight oh. <laughs> he's in Lansing what can I say I know he's going to be watching these so I'm going to get him for a little while just a little while okay all right so let's go to the calendar today being January 3rd we will be taking down the Christmas decorations on Main Street this Sunday, the 8th, at 8. We will be meeting at 8 a.m. Uh, to start taking the, those down. On the 10th, the Cable Commission will be meeting right here at City Hall at 7 o'clock. And on the 12th, at 7 o'clock, the Planning Commission will be meeting. And two weeks uh, from yesterday, the 16th, will be our next regular City Council meeting. The City Council also will have a quarterly roundtable meeting on the 30th, I believe at 6, yeah, at 6 o'clock right here at City Hall. I also have a couple of announcements. The Richmond Community Theater will be presenting what they call the February Follies, a night of entertainment, and there will be audition. And basically this is a talent show for the community. The audition date is January 7th at 2 o'clock, so if you have a talent, Go to Richmond Community Theater, which is located on Parker Street and Churchill Street on the north end of town, and show them your talent. You might just uh, make the uh, show date, which is February 3rd and 4th at 7 o'clock. So the proceeds from that is going to go to Turning Point in Mount Clemens. The Richmond Rotary Club uh, invites everyone to come to a Red Barn renovation fundraiser. Uh, most of you have seen the Red Barn. Uh, it's their um, uh, food wagon that they have at the Good Old Days Festival and at the Armada Fair each year. It's uh, starting to get in a little bit of rough shape, and the uh, health department uh, has upped its uh, uh, requirements. So they are doing a fundraiser at Manacy's on January 27th. Uh, doors open at 6, dinner at 7. And you can get those tickets by calling 727-1011 which would be the uh, Richmond Flower Shop uh, or where Manacy's Hall. Um, it's dinner, games, and raffles, and that's to support the Red Barn. So they have a flyer that's, that's out and about. Hopefully our camera can pick that up. Very important to keep that going for the Richmond Rotary. Is there anything else that we need to add to the calendar at this time? Welcome uh, 2017. Looking forward to a, an exciting year again on the City Council and in the City. Uh, we've got a lot of projects going, as you all know, and uh, some hard work, and hopefully we'll reach those goals this year again, uh, at least strive for them, and uh, working with our administration and, and the community. So looking forward to, to another great year in Richmond. Is there any other business for the City Council? Being that, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Make a motion to adjourn. Support. Motion been made and supported. There's no discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Against. Motion passes. Thanks for being with us.